Hello there and welcome to the new tutorial where we will going to discuss the cross validation which is a simple but a very powerful approach to create better statistical model in data science. So I got a lot of requests where people asked me to explain about the cross validation and I have created a small presentation then a code within the Python which you can follow to run the cross validation. All right, so let's first understand what is cross validation. So what is cross validation? Well, in theory or in my own words, it is an advanced approach to split the data sets into train and testing. So we have a conventional way or the normal way which by which we just uh, split the data between train, training and testing data set using the train test split method. So if you have used the machine learning or within the python there is this train twist train test split method where we can specify the x and y variable and then specify the test size and generally you take the test size as 30 percent so what you are doing is only specifying or only dividing the data set between two section one is training another is testing now in cross validation also you do the same but with a twist which i will show you so as I was saying, it is an advanced approach to split the data set into training and testing to make sure each observation become part of training. So that's the key part to make sure each observation become the part of training and testing data set to ensure the complete representation of data for better model. So that means in, when you will build the statistical model or when you will train the model, each and every observation using the cross validation will be validated in this model. So your model will be much more robust and uh, uh, exposed to more the entire 100% of the data for giving you the best result. Now, here is an existing approach. We have 70% of the data in training and 30% of the data in testing. That's using the train test split method or in R or in any other tool you are using the way you want, but that's how we usually do it. Now, from this, if we transition it to let's say five fold cross validation. Now, five is just an arbitrary or a random number which I have picked. Now, it can be 10, it can be 8, it can be 3, or it can be 15. But you just need to keep in mind if you increase the number, the processing of the data will going to increase because in five fold cross validation the data set will be divided into five different data set five small data set and it will have five iteration how let's see this so here if you see the data is divided into five one two three four five where four data sets are considered as training and fifth is considered as test that means out of four data set, one will be testing data set. Now in the second iteration, you will have first three as train, fifth as train, but the fourth set is test. Now in the next iteration, you have first two as training, then you have one test data set, then the rest of the two training. And similarly over here, the test is basically the second data set and the rest of the data sets are training. And in the fifth iteration or in the last iteration, you have first data set as testing data set and rest of the other data sets are training data set. So this way you can see that first we divided into the five uh, main data set into the five data set. One is the testing. And as we are moving on the iteration, the testing set is changing hands. This way your model is using both the training and testing data on the 100% of the data set and have the best knowledge out from your data. So that's in a nutshell what you have the cross validation or what usually happens in the uh, behind of the scenes when you run the cross validation. Now cross validation run you know you run it with the help of the grid search method because when you apply this entire procedure on a model, you need to apply it on a statistical model or on a data on which you want to create a statistical model. And grid search basically have this option where you can specify how many uh, 
x fold cross validation you want whether you want 5 whether you want 10 because it has a cv parameter as 10 so let's see how you can implement it in the python all right so here i'm in python and what i have done so far is only importing the data by using the pandas library so i'm importing the pandas library as pt then i'm creating a data object or the pandas data frame object by importing this file you can find this file in the description description section where using that link you can get access and then over here we are using the info method and we see that it's 534 mb now if i use the entire size this will be this will going to take hours within the grid search because it's a very resource intensive so what i will going to do to demonstrate here is uh, subset the data set so if i show you the fraud because this is fraud is something what we need to predict from this based on the different column so first of all let's quickly check the data set which is uh, data dot head and here we have these columns where the payment type is present and rest of the columns if you see mostly are numeric except these this and the payment type so what i'll do is i will quickly remove these columns because we don't need it so if i say uh, data equals to data dot drop to drop the column and what column we want name and name destination because those are just the unique rows and uh, name test and the last one is flat fraud because that is also not so whatever column you want to remove you can just go ahead and remove it from here and we need to provide the axis equals to one because we want to remove the columns all right uh throws an error is flagged fraud not found in access okay let's see this which column it said name origin is flat fraud okay name o r i g o r i g name test is f l a g g e t and f r a u t is f l okay there is the spelling mistake now if you see so if you see the data set now we should not have these values right okay so for model building what i need to do is convert this into the dummies variable because these are important uh, variable type uh, the payment type then to convert that what i need is basically a dummies method so i will just create a dummy variable over here or dummy object and use pd dot get underscore dummies op, uh, function and provide data dot type over here now it should have uh, dummy dot head for each of the payment type it has created variable so wherever the variable is used or the payment type is used the one is present so for row zero one is present for one one is present similarly over here wherever the payment type particular payment type is occurring you have the payment type coded as one all right so now we just need to concatenate that so data equals to pd dot concat function to concatenate so we need to concat the data and the dummy and we need to concatenate the columns all right so let's execute this now if i just check we should have the rows over here now let's go ahead and create the x and y variable so my x variable i just don't need this variable and this variable because fraud is something we need to predict so x equals to uh, data dot drop and i want to drop type and uh, is fraud is fraud and uh, dot values 
or and I need to provide the axis equals to one because we need to drop the columns. So what it is doing is it is returning the entire data set after dropping the type and is fraud column and dot values is making sure that it's in the array because the machine learning accept the array as a value. So if I execute, this is what it will going to produce. Why? So one thing which I would probably do is because it will going to take a lot of, if I show you the shape of the data set, it has 6.3 million rows. And uh, what I need is uh, just to, I want to reduce this data set. So what I can do is, is uh, data underscore fraud equals to just take entire data from this data dot is, is fraud equals to equals to one. All right. So what we are doing is we are taking all the fraud values, which are somewhere around 8,000. So if I just execute this and if you see data underscore fraud is dot shape, then you have 8,213. Similarly, if I just copy that and paste it to get the just the 20,000 rows. So overall, my data set will be of 28,000, which is faster to run. So data underscore no fraud, then equals to equals to zero dot had what it is making sure is I will get the first 20,000 for data where no fraud has happened. So if I now see data underscore no fraud that shape, you will get 20,000 rows and 13. Now I just need to concatenate this. So I will, sorry, I will just create one more row and uh, that is the data equals to pd dot concat um, in that data underscore fraud data underscore no fraud and this time x is equals to zero because we need to concatenate the by row so if i execute that you will get the data dot had as like this right so you can even check shape, which will return the 28,000 rows, as you can see it over here. Now, if we uh, drop these two columns, it will give me X because type is something we have converted into a categorical variables is fraud is something a target variable. So let's go ahead and do that. And Y equals to data dot type dot, sorry, data dot uh, <clears throat> is fraud because this is a target variable. So now I have the X and Y values. Now I can go ahead and uh, implement the grid search. So first of all, we need to, since it is a classification, I will use the uh, logistic regression. So from sklearn dot linear model import logistic regression and from sklearn dot model selection l e a r n dot model underscore selection import grid search c v as you can see c v is present which is cross validation now if i say log underscore rag equals to logistic regression i'm just initializing with default parameters and after that um, what i need is uh, grid search cv so grid equals to grid search cv and what you will specify is the model and cv equals to 10. it has the capability where you can get lot more than just this for example we have the penalty l1 and l2 we have the c value and couple of other values which you can provide it into the grid search CV but this is not what I am doing if you want to see you can see my previous uh, logistic regression and KNN regression where I've uh, completed it into a detail but right now I'm just going ahead and putting it so it's saying one positional argument required which is param grid so I will provide one argument which is nothing but uh, the value of let's say penalty okay so penalty 
and that is let's say l2 but the default one i am providing as you can see it over here penalty is l2 so that's the default i am providing comma because it is expecting one parameter all right there is some need to be sequenced or np dot nd array okay um let me put it like this and now it's executed because i provided it like a list it was not accepting it as a normal array now what i need is grid dot fit based on the x and y values if i sorry grid capital g grid dot fit it will give some warning so just ignore that now it has run using the cross validation as value 10 this is the cross validation value we provide now what it gives us some parameters like uh, grid dot best param best parameters so penalty l2 something which we provided is uh, what it has given because that's the only default value and it also gives us the score so grid dot best underscore score is what 83 percent is something what it is giving us so you have the option that uh, first you can just apply this logistic regression on these values for example if you say log underscore reg dot fit and x comma y so it will fit the value the parameter and then log underscore reg dot score based on the x comma y value it will give you some score so in this case if you see the logistic regression model is giving you the better score however i will going to trust more on this data set because it has a splitted or this 83 percent which is a penalized score because it has uh, uh, splitted the data set into 10 different validation and then gave us the score of 83 percent so this is saying that uh, this is the best score once you split the data and run the model on the entire data using that train and test split but uh, you as, as i showed you you can also directly first check what is the default one also you can um, use the train test split method which i have explained in my previous videos which also is one of the previous old way of doing the um, splitting the data set but that's about how you can uh, specify the parameters within the grid search cv for the cross validation equals to 10 and the model and the respective at least one parameter that's what it expects and then get the score and the best param so i will just also mention the best param so that sorry best params and it will show l2 you can come to basically both l1 and l2 for example comma l1 and if i execute this execute this it will run it again based on those two parameters all right now let's see the score now see the score you have 98 percent from 83 percent to 98 percent it's a huge jump and mainly because we used two different parameters l2 and l1 so i'm sure now the best parameter will be l1 so as you can see so it has a lot of lot of scope as you can see over here uh, you can provide parameters l1 regularization or l2 regularization and over here i already showed you it has a lot of different parameters as well like one of the parameter is uh, this which we want to uh, tune it so see it in my previous video for logistic regression if you want to know more about it but yeah that's mainly about how you can implement the cross validation with the help of the grid search algorithm so that's about it and i'll meet you in the new video the new topic